Hi, Mrs. Potter's class, it's Mrs. Potter. First and foremost, I wanna start off by saying to you, I miss you guys. I miss your smiles, I miss your hugs, I miss the chorus of greetings when you walk into class. But during this time, I thought that I could reach out to you by saying, telling you all about my house. You guys have asked me questions after questions about what it's like at Mrs. Potter's house. So I thought I'd bring you a series of videos from Mrs. Potter's house. I mean, I've taken you to Indiana, I've taken you to Illinois, why not to Lake Helen, Florida? In our first episode, we're gonna start off by planting a pollinator's garden. That's right. Um, I've enlisted the help of my son, Lewis, and Cheyenne to start off this project. It's been a doozy. We have had a lot to do with tilling. We've had a lot to do with raking up. Oh my goodness, the planting. It's gonna be a two episode series, so stay tuned. I'm gonna take you to the backyard. Bye for now. Okay guys, here are the plants that we're gonna be putting in. I am so excited. We've got our milkweed. We've got some lantana. We've got a bunch of stuff that I'll be sharing with you. We are gonna be able to take care of all of our pollinators. Um, so much stuff that I wanna tell you about, but I'll tell you about it as it's going in. I'll talk to you in just a little bit. Bye for now. Here we are. We have done the first round of tilling. And you can see we're creating quite a mess. Um, Lewis and I are working together. He's tilling, I'm raking. We're going back now for the second and third round to make sure that we get everything nice and tilled up and we're down to good soil. I've got some fresh soil being um, delivered to the house today, dropped off. Again, that social distancing is so important, um, but we are out, remember National Nutrition Month, getting our activity outside, making sure that we are working, okay? So I hope you guys are doing great and we'll just keep following the progress of this project. All right, for now, I'll talk to you later. Bye. All righty, my friends, Mrs. Potter's class, here we are. Today we have worked for about three and a half hours. You can see all the soil that's up on the fence line and you can see how dirty the pool deck is. We have tilled and tilled and tilled probably about six or seven times to get as many of the weeds out as we can. We have pulled by hand, we've used the tiller, we've used the rake, we've gotten everything up. Then we laid down this, um, this material that keeps the weeds from growing up through. Will it stop them? Absolutely not, but it definitely deters them. It, it helps prevent them. In addition, we use these stakes. Um, you can see how dirty Mrs. Potter's nails are, sorry. Um, these stakes help hold the material in place. Um, Cheyenne is in the video going through, making sure that it's all staked down. Tomorrow we'll start laying the um, plants out, seeing where we want them, and making sure that the irrigation is all in place. We've got some irrigation back here, but we're definitely gonna need some more misters. So that's where we are today. Again, we're in the middle of the afternoon. It's about almost two o'clock. So we've been working since about 9.15 this morning. We're definitely hot and tired. Until later, I'll show you more videos as we progress. Bye. Good morning, Mrs. Potter's class. It's day two, and we are in the process of starting our planting. I'm gonna turn the phone around here and let you see what we've done. Lewis and I have gone ahead and laid the plants out. Um, and I'm real excited for you to see. Hang on one second, I'll be right back with you. By the way, if I haven't told you guys, I miss you so much and I can't wait to see you back at Ivy Hawn. Alrighty, here we are. Lou and I worked on setting the plants out. Um, we left a walkway here through, we're gonna put some pavers there, uh, just a walking path. Coming through here after we handle the sprinklers, we'll be um, laying down some rock. Um, but we wanna put pavers through there so that you have a walking path because certainly you don't wanna be stepping on the rocks. You can see as we go further that we've left an area. We're gonna be putting in some four by fours with some quick creep um, to put the hammock back in there. Yes, now you know my secret. Sometimes I like to lay out here in the hammock. The girls do too, um, as we lay out by the pool. So we needed to take that into account when we were laying the plants out. We also had to make sure that the plants that were along the fence line were tall 
but they wouldn't interfere with the hammock. They wouldn't get messed up. We've got our milkweed back there. And we've also got a hibiscus over there. One of my favorite plants. We've got some lantana. Lantana is gonna lay closer to the ground and be more of a creeping plant. And we've got some other plants that once we get them in the ground, I'll be happy to tell you more about them. Day two started off a little bit later for us today. We'll see how far we go. I do plan to get these plants in the ground and shore up our sprinkler system today. I'll be telling you more about it later. Here we are. We are in the middle of planting. Actually, I'm not planting right now because I'm videoing for you. Um, we've got two plants here. Um, they're part of the Snapdragon family, but not exactly the same one. The one here on the right is from the Serenita family. It's the Serenita white, but also part of the Snapdragon family. Both of these plants are attractive to um, butterflies, and the one on the left is also attractive to hummingbirds. Um, they're great for borders. They both grow about 14 inches tall, and they're great um, as border plants. The one on the right, they say, can be used even in hanging baskets. Um, we're using them here in the garden. It's gonna take them a while to grow to their full height, especially this uh, little Serenita white because it's a little bit smaller plant. I'm looking forward to seeing them grow and already just in their containers, we're noticing the butterflies bouncing around already. We've had some beautiful yellow sulfurs coming around. Um, on the left, we have another um, Snapdragon family plant. It's called a purple archangel and very similar except that in the indications it did not mention that it could be done in hanging baskets but it's great as a border plant so i'm looking forward to seeing how these grow out and i'll bring you more about some other plants in just a few minutes bye potter's class it's me again i am back with you showing you some more of the plants that we got this beauty right here there's actually two of them you can see the beautiful yellow flowers these are prairie sunflowers they are known to attract um, a couple different type of pollinators. Of course, our beautiful bees and some butterflies. Um, we've been out here planting this morning. I can't take the credit. I haven't been doing much planting. I've been doing more videoing. Um, we have seen bumblebees. We've seen some sulfur butterflies. We've seen dragonflies. The pollinators are already loving the garden. And these, um, these prairie sunflowers have already gotten some attention. The thing with these guys is they're gonna get pretty tall. Um, in the western part of the United States, they can get as tall as like 10 feet tall. Here in the eastern part of the US, they're not gonna get quite as big, but we're expecting anywhere from four to five feet tall. Um, they look kind of sprawling right now. We'll see what happens. I know it's gonna take a while. This beauty right here with the beautiful purple flowers. This is not got quite a lovely name. It's Society Garlic. Um, one of the benefits of society garlic, in addition to attracting the pollinators, it also repels mosquitoes. So out here by the pool deck, it's gonna be a great repellent. Um, why, it, why it repels the mosquitoes, all we can guess is it's because of the smell of the plant. It's not quite appealing, but it will be great out by the pool. There's another couple ones, I'll talk to you later. Hi, Bye. Mrs. Potter's class. It is almost two o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. And this is the progress we've made today. All the plants are planted. Um, I know it doesn't look like much, but it was a lot to get this done. Um, we have got the posts in the ground for the hammock. We've got to let those dry. They are concreted in. We have had a lot of pollinators. As I'm talking to you, I'm seeing some bees flying around, a lot of dragonflies, some sulfur butterflies, um, and everything has been watered down for today. We have some extra plants that we're gonna be planting on the side of my house and over in another area that we've got. We are gonna have lots of pollinators floating around here. As I've gone through this, I can see we've still got some um, irrigation work to do. We've got to, along the bottom of the fence line, we're gonna put a border so that the rocks don't go outside the fence. Um, and we're gonna be making sure that we've got this all ready to go. This is gonna definitely be a two-part series. So I look forward to bringing the next part with me, with to you, and um, making sure that you guys through the, go through this whole process with me. 
So thanks for tagging along. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. Seeing that we're starting a series, I thought that we might name this Remarkable Agriscience. Why? Because I think everything about agriscience is remarkable. I think everything about you guys is remarkable. And I think everything about Ivy Han is remarkable. So as we venture through these remote learning experiences, let's look forward to some remarkable learning. Until next time, bye for now.